Rebuilding a Stuart 10V steam engine part 16. Fitting the steam inlet and exhaust piping. Correcting a common problem with twin cylinder vertical steam engines. Setting the valve timing for early admission, then bench testing the engine using compressed air. In the previous episode, using my distribution unit and two pieces of silicone rubber tubing to connect the air to the engine, I gave it a run. In this episode, I'm going to fit the proper piping. The first thing to do is to fit the other inlet manifold flange. In the bag with these pre-machined exhaust flanges were some aluminium washers, but I'm not going to use those. Instead, I'm going to use some copper shim washers to make sure that the inlet manifold flanges are in exactly the right place. I found two shim washers that were perfect for the job, and this allowed me to accurately align the inlet steam flange with the other one. As usual, I will be using some Loctite 542 thread sealant to seal the threads. Although, as I'm using these copper washers, the sealant isn't really required, but I always use it. Steam leaks on engines and boilers in and around brass fittings can cause problems with corrosion. That's why I always use Loctite 542. But do not confuse it with Loctite 603. That is a retainer. Here I'm checking the alignment of the piping with the flanges, and the alignment is fairly good. There is, however, a problem that I've known about for quite a while. One of the cylinders is not aligned properly. As you can see here, the left-hand cylinder is crooked. This is very common with vertical twin-cylinder steam engines. I noticed this problem very early on when I started rebuilding this engine, and I also knew how to fix it. I slackened off every one of the Allen caphead bolts that are used to secure the cylinders to the top of the standards. And because previously I had enlarged the holes in the top of the standards, now I have a little bit of movement to align everything. I held the cylinders firmly in place using a large barco adjustable spanner and then retightened the Allen caphead bolts. This brought both of the cylinders into a satisfactory alignment. This is a job I wasn't looking forward to. It's not particularly difficult, it's just very fiddly. Here I'm fitting the steam inlet piping to the flanges that are screwed into the steam chest. With the help of a small pair of surgical forceps, a nut spinner and a couple of spanners, one end of the steam piping was secured to the flange. This is the other end, and as you can see, it looks to be horrendously out of alignment. But don't forget, this is very soft copper piping that's been kicking about in a box for quite a while. After not forgetting to fit the gasket between the two parts, using the same method that I've just shown, this end of the steam inlet piping soon aligned with the flange on the steam chest. Here's a close-up of the operation. I'm holding the nut in place, eventually I get it at the right angle. I'm using a nut spinner to rotate the bolt. Once it grabs, I then tighten everything up using two spanners. And as always, these are only 7BA bolts, do not over tighten them. With the steam inlet pipe securely in place, it's now time to fit the displacement lubricator. I'm using a Stuart Models displacement lubricator because it's traditional. I forgot to mention that they are also very good. Once again, I'm using some Loctite 542 on it to prevent any steam leaks from the threads. And in this case, I was very lucky. When I tightened the part in place, it was where it needed to be and didn't need any shim washers. As before, I'm temporarily fitting a steam connection, and this is entirely wrong. This is a double steam union fitting, and it's quarter by 40 threads per inch. It should be quarter by 32 threads per inch, but I haven't got any of those. I don't use quarter by 32 very often, but sometimes I need the fittings, so it's time to make some, I think. I'll cover that in another video, not this one. Even though I didn't show it, I injected some steam oil into the inlet union first. Please be aware that a displacement lubricator is only suitable for oiling the engine when it's in steam. Displacement lubricators do not work with compressed air. As you've just seen, the engine's response to the throttle or regulator is really good. Once again, it's time to give the engine a thorough oiling, this time on every moving part that I can see. During some of these engine runs, there will not be any narration. In the clips that you've just seen, it's very clear that the engine's timing is not set quite right yet. I think it's time to fit the exhaust piping. 
I'm using more or less the same principle, but instead of the pair of forceps, I'm using a very small pair of pliers. And to help the alignment, I'm using the point of my scriber. All I need to do now, as before, is fit a gasket in between the flanges and then fit the bolts in exactly the same way as I've shown previously. It's a bit of a puzzle why the flanges are not exactly the same shape as the gaskets, but that's the way it is. It's also a bit of a puzzle why the threaded flanges are not the same shape as the flanges on the piping. The piping and flange sets are not homemade, they're commercially produced items. And eventually they fit together and everything looks okay. Now comes the time when I go into obsess mode with my little iron key to set the timing to perfection, or as near perfection as I can get it. Here I'm checking the amount of blow from the exhaust, and it's quite good. Once again I'm going to stop talking and give the engine quite a high speed run. Followed by a medium speed run. Everything's looking quite good in this close-up. The engine isn't as noisy as this. My entire workbench is a soundboard, which amplifies the slightest knock. When I put the engine on a piece of Scotch-Brite, it's a lot quieter. While I was running the engine, I had a quick look in my box of bits and pieces that fit Stuart Models engines, and I found a union nut that's a perfect fit on the exhaust outlet. As I ran the engine for a while, I noticed that the oil in one of the glass lubricators was getting a bit contaminated. So I blew away all of the old oil, ready to refill the lubricators. When I first started working on this engine, it was a bit of a mess and the crankshaft was bent. I straightened the crankshaft and later on in this video, I'll just recap from episode one how I straightened the crankshaft. The oil was getting dirty in the glass lubricators because all of the parts are running in or breaking in. With the pistons being a perfect fit owing to the silicone o-rings, the engine is very powerful indeed for its size. And under load it's sounding quite good, but the valve timing is still very very slightly out. I'm holding off on the obsessive part. I just want to run the engine and bed it in. Rather than wear my fingers out, I thought I would use some Scotch-Brite on the flywheel to clean up the edge of that. Then I slowed down the engine and adjusted the gland nuts. The engine's running very freely and the time has come to set the timing perfectly. Admission is late on one side of the engine, but it's not affecting the performance very much. By using very low pressure compressed air and turning the engine over by hand, I can detect when the air is being admitted to the cylinder. Because the slide valve is in the right place, all I have to do is make some minute adjustments to the Allen grub screw that holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft. I want the compressed air to be admitted to the cylinder via the valve just before the piston goes over top and bottom dead centre. This will admit the steam slightly early and cushion the parts and the entire engine should run a lot better than it is doing now. Like this in fact. And it's time to stop talking altogether. I hope everyone's having a great holiday. Stay healthy, thanks for watching. And I hope that you found this entire series useful. With a bit of work, I can make this engine good.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.